Adam Carolla has a new show. It's called uh, Truth Yeller, The Daily Wire with Adam Carolla. He'll be joined by comedic legends like Jay Leno, Rob Riggle, William Shatner. Uh, hilarious stand-up specials. First episode just premiered on The Daily Wire this past Friday. We spoke with Adam Carolla, and uh, I asked him if he'd ever been fired from a job. Uh, well, I, I mean, it, it's, it's a little murky these days, uh, but I, I, you know, my radio format, my radio station I was on when I was doing morning radio, when I took over for Howard Stern on the West coast flip formats in Oh nine. So I wasn't really fired, but I didn't have a place to go Monday morning. So I'll, 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 I'll take that as firing. But when you think back on that, you're replacing Howard Stern. Was there any part of you that said, what am I doing? Well, you know, when I was replacing Howard Stern and and I was successful and had a bunch of affiliates and was number one in a lot of markets and, and did it for over three years, people would say to me all the time, like, wow, you're replacing Howard Stern. And I had an answer for him. And also I had a history. I had done Stern show 50 times. I'd sat in with him all the time. I used to sit in Artie's chair and, you know, do all four hours and stuff like that. So to many, Stern was the great and powerful Oz. You know, to me, I kind of knew him as a friend and a, almost a colleague and a guy. And I felt like I'd been in the ring and sparred with the champ so many times that I felt like, oh yeah, I, I feel confident about this. Uh, but I said, when people said, you know, you're replacing Howard Stern, aren't you intimidated? And I said, you know, Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston used to be married and then they got divorced. And if somebody said, would you like to date Jennifer Aniston? Your first thought might be, well, I don't know if I look as good as Brad Pitt with my shirt off, but you'd be a fool not to say yes. And that's the way I approached it. Would you date Brad Pitt? That's kind of what I was saying. I'm glad you were able to. <laughs> in the Should you ever apologize for a joke? <clears throat> I always think you should apologize on a macro level and not a micro level. So, you know, sometimes with me, people go, oh, he never apologizes. I, I apologize to my daughter all the time. I would apologize to my wife. I'd apologize to my dad, my mom, like my sister, like friends, like people I'd done something wrong to on a sort of micro level level. You don't want to be the person that just doesn't apologize. You know, if you walk into a Starbucks and you cut in front of somebody in line and they say, excuse me, apologize. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you, you know. But when you tell a joke and you sort of put it out to the world and the mob comes after you, then don't apologize to the mob. Apologize to the man. Explain the new show that you're doing, uh, The Daily Wire. It's a new comedy show. It's called Truth Yeller. And you had uh, Jay Leno as your first guest. William Shatner, Rob Riggle. Are... So what? what is the goal with this show? Well, it's a series of stand-up specials, hour-long stand-up specials. It's on The Daily Wire. Um, for me, I'm a comedian. I want to do a stand-up special. There's no real play for me at Netflix or HBO. Hollywood has kind of gotten ultra woke and I'm on the wrong side of history, according to them. So I went somewhere that would embrace me and that was the Daily Wire. It's a traditional stand-up special at the beginning. I do about 15 or 20 minutes of stand-up at the beginning. Then the guest comes out guest does a little bit of stand-up, we'll do an interview, we'll play some games, and at the end, we do a full improv game where before the show, we'll hand out balls to the audience, they'll write one word on it, it'll go into a bingo hopper, the guest will pull it out, say the one word, and whatever the one word is, we need to do, or I need to do a stand-up routine on it. So it's improv, it's stand-up, it's kind of a hybrid thing. It's a good show. We've done two so far. They've really turned out great. And it's just exciting to kind of mess with the format a little bit. 
How dangerous of a time is it for comedians? Well, it's dangerous if you're a comedian and you host The Bachelor or you're a comedian and you work for ESPN or, you, you know, if you have a mothership, it's very dangerous. If your mothership is HBO or ABC or CNN, or you, you're going to get screwed. You're not going to be able to go out, do a set that night and then come back to work in the morning. Someone's going to film you. If you don't really have a mothership, if you can be sort of autonomous uh, like I am, then there's no danger whatsoever. The real danger is when you're getting a paycheck from Disney and Disney can cut you off. Give me the uh, person that you'd love to interview in this format. Well, Dan, I feel like you would make a matching no. guess. No. Okay. No. Uh, then uh, I'll go with Lee Iacocca. Is he still alive? He, no, he's not. And I'm out of answers. How about an um, athlete? Um, yeah, I mean, like someone like Charles Barkley would be awesome up there, you know, or maybe Aaron Rodgers or, you know, somebody who was kind of in the zeitgeist, someone who had something to say, someone who had, you know, aspirations beyond what they did on the court or the playing field. Guys, guys like that. Tom Brady, LeBron James. Yeah, although I feel like Tom Brady, LeBron, I, I think Tom would be a little careful about what he was saying. LeBron would have a kind of hard angle to what he was saying. They they would all be welcome, of course. But to me, I I, I feel I feel like the uh, round mound of rebound would probably be my my choice. And I'm sure you've been around people. I'm always fascinated that if I'm around a stand up comedian, or I'm around somebody who is just funny that doesn't mean that the person who is just funny could be a stand-up comedian and sometimes that stand-up comedian is not good at just being funny in the room does that make sense to you yeah i think you know to to bring it to your world i always thought being funny is like saying that guy's athletic you know what i mean but what's his sport you know where's the training you know you know what is the discipline you know Comedy is kind of that way. You, you know, being generically funny is like saying, oh, that guy's a really good athlete. You know what I mean? But, but, but you don't get paid unless you pick a sport, you know, and then you focus on it and you get good at it. Stand up, you know, late night host, morning radio, taking that funny, that athleticism and then directing it and training it because, you know, we we all remember you guys that were just great natural athletes, but you gotta you gotta train, you gotta study the game film. You, going back to Tom Brady, and back to back to guys like Brady. I know guys who are really funny, but they couldn't really get get it out on stage. Yeah. You know, just yeah. like that guy's a great athlete, but he's not a. And then other guys would play beyond their ability. Or they were gamers, you know, they showed up in those real clutch moments and got that hit in the ninth inning. So sports and comedy are, are kind of kind of analogous in, in that in that regard. But who is the funniest comedian who's not doing his stand up bit where you're just sitting around at dinner and, and he just makes you laugh where it hurts? You know, I always say, like people say to me, like, who's the funniest guy, you know, Adam. And I go, you don't know that guy's name. <laughs> that's, that's the problem. You know, they're guys, I mean, guys like Jimmy Kimmel are funny guys, but I know guys that are technically funnier, but they don't have his work ethic. They don't have his focus. They don't have his drive. They don't have his 10,000 hours of experience. They don't, you know, just like, you know, Jerry Rice and Jerry Porter, you know, Jerry Porter had it. I, I, I do think about this because I know Jerry, I, I was at the Raiders training camp when Jerry Porter, who was a wide out for the Raiders and someone else after that, he was an amazing, phenomenal athlete. Jerry Porter was taller, faster, and had bigger hands than Jerry Rice. But, but Jerry Rice is going to the hall of fame and Jerry Porter isn't. And that's not because Jerry Rice is a better athlete than Jerry Porter. Is this the first Jerry Porter reference on the show, Paulie? 
uh, in at least a decade. Okay, that's what I that's what I thought. Uh, David, what, what I challenge you, Dan, to watch Jerry Porter and try it yourself. When he made a catch and he got knocked down and he was on his back in the NFL, he could get up without using his hand <laughs> from his back. He would kick. Look it up. Everyone look it up. He would kick his heels to the side, hold the ball on his chest and just rise. He's a 6'3", 230-pound guy in full pads who would just pop up. He was an incredible athlete. And it really meant nothing to his ability to catch a pass. No, it didn't. I think it freaked the defense out <laughs> a little. <laughs> I've been around David Spade before. And, and so Sandler, uh, Chris Rock, the whole group, when they're around Schneider, Spade's the funniest guy. And, and, right. and they acknowledge it. Rock and Sandler say Spade is the funniest guy. Now, if I put that, you know, to a question for people, they would not pick David Spade over Sandler or Chris Rock or Chris Farley. You know, there's just something about the sneaky throwaway line that I love. See, I was never a, a, a Robin Williams fan because it, it was so there where I want to find it. I don't want it to find me. Uh, right. But, you know, you have some comedians. You know, Sam Kennison was there right in front of you. Uh, a lot of great guys. I just love the, the humor where they tap you on the shoulder. Where do you stand yeah, with that? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, I feel the same way about lingerie. I, I just, I, I mean, I don't need all the heels and all the straps and all the, uh, all the tassels. <laughs> I, I just like a nice bra and panties and, and it's go time. I don't want to be hit in the face. I don't want to get hit in the face either with it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good luck with it. It's great to talk to you again. I, I appreciate it. Always good to talk to you, Dan. Adam Carolla, radio personality, comedian, actor, podcaster, host of the Adam Carolla Show, and his new show on the Daily Wire. It's called Truth Yeller.